this is the transverse section of microsporangium as i told there are three major layers the outermost is epidermis then is endothelium and the third one is tapetum which nourishes as well as helps in the development of pollen grains and to these layers the connectivity is middle layers now when an anther is young it shows sporangious tissues which is nothing but homogeneous cluster of cells arranged inside or in the center of the anther these are known as sporangious tissues these sporangious tissues are responsible for the formation of microspore tetrads these sporangious tissues undergo meiotic division and forms microspore tetrads now when we enlarge this transfer section view on the microscope we can see the four layers very clearly this is the outermost epidermis then endothelium the middle layer and tapetum now to understand it further let us study microsporogenesis micro poro genesis microsporogenesis is the process of formation of microspores by pmc pmc is potential pollen or mother cell now this spore sporogenous tissues undergoes meiotic division and give microspore tetrads further what happens this these tissues only they they are once they form microspore tetrads these microspore tetrads are responsible for the formation of this pmc which is potential pollen or mother cell this potential pollen or mother cell it undergoes meiosis and forms microspores and these microspores are further responsible for the formation of pollen grains once favorable conditions are there or as anther matures or grows old or anther dehydrates these microspores which are somewhat like this One, two, three, four. Here, they burst like this, and they release pollen grains. Microsporangium. Struct. It is a structure present in anther. Now, in this structure, micro sporogenesis takes place. This micro sporogenesis occurs through sporogenous tissue. and this sporogenous tissue it is nothing but homogeneous cluster of cells present in the center of microsporangium these tissues undergo meiotic division give microspore tetrads then they give pmc which is potential mother or pollen cells this pmc undergoes meiosis and this meiosis gives microspores and this process of generation of microspores from pmc is known as microsporogenesis and this lead further microspores leads to formation of pollen grains now let us understand what are pollen grains what is their structure and how are they formed pollen grains pollen grains are nothing but male gametophyte or we can say male gametes these are male gametes these are 20 to 
micrometers in size and they are responsible for or uh, they are responsible for the fertilization in uh, plants they are carried by or they transfer media can be water air animals etc these pollen grains uh, are usually seen to be transferred by water air or animals and yes they do cause certain kind of acute allergic reactions or responses in human beings you might have observed around you that in the season of pollination few of your known classmates friends or neighbors tend to develop certain allergic conditions certain respiratory problems these pollens are responsible for that now let us understand the structure of a pollen grain this is how a pollen grain looks like it is having two layers the outermost layer is exine and the inner layer is in time it is having a thick and dense thick and dense cytoplasm with one nucleus now this exine it consists of sporopollenin this sporopollenin prevents pollen grains from degradation this sporopollenin is found to be so strong that a number of enzymes alkali acids are inactive upon this it is even believed that there is no enzyme or no chemical action as such found against sporopollenin that's why pollen grains are tend to be found in fossils this layer in time it is a thin continuous layer which is a protective covering to the cytoplasm now the cytoplasm of pollen grain is having a plasma membrane one nucleus further there are small germ pores found in exine in the pollen grains now let us see how pollen grain matures and further gets distributed this is a pollen grain there will be at the end lower end of it there will be a irregular spindle formation now this is vegetative cell and this is generative cell now what happens a pollen grain further matures irregular spindle formation is observed and then it divides into two parts one is the vegetative cell other one is the generative cell in majority of plants pollen grains are shed at this two staged where there is one vegetative one generative cell is present and in other cases this generative cell is dispersed or distributed and vegetative cell is remained now this vegetative cell is having a very thick cytoplasm pl having plasma membrane and one nucleus these pollen grains are found to be very very rich in nutrients that's why in majority of western countries pollen tablets are used as nutrition supplements 